Hey guys, Dr. Dave here with another Hacked Existence video. Today we're going to be installing a basic PFSense configuration on the router we built in our previous video. First, let's enter the BIOS and make a few configuration changes. First, let's go to the Advanced Settings tab. Now, click on Chipset Configuration. We're going to change the primary graphics adapter to Onboard. What this will do is prevent the NIC from interfering with the graphics as we have the Intel NIC installed in the 4X PCI Express lane. We also want to disable the onboard LAN, which is the real tech card, as it will cause problems with driver compatibility issues in PFSense. Now, we'll save the changes to the BIOS and exit and plug in our external USB CD-ROM drive containing the ISO with the image on it. Okay, now that we've inserted our disk, let's go ahead and use F11 to get to the boot menu and select our external USB CD-ROM as the boot device. Okay, now we're ready to begin our installation process. We'll accept the license and install PFSense. Choose the default key map and use the auto disk setup. Now what this will do is it'll partition our disk for us and copy the operating system onto it. Okay, at this point we don't want to open up a shell and make any manual modifications, so we say no. And now we're ready for a reboot. Okay, so now that we've booted up PFSense, we're going to go ahead and assign the interfaces. So option number one is we're going to assign the LAN port. Right now we're not going to set up any VLAN, so go ahead and press no. Now we will engage the auto detection and plug our WAN port cable into the WAN. This is the cable from the modem. Give it a few seconds to connect and go ahead and press enter. And as you can see, the link was detected. Now we'll do the same for the LAN interface. Now go ahead and connect the cable from your switch to the port directly below the WAN cable. Give that a few seconds as well and then press enter. For now, we're not going to install the other interfaces, so go ahead and press enter for nothing, and go ahead and save the configuration. Okay, now we can see in this screen that our WAN interface has been assigned an IP address that is our external IP address from our modem. We've also defined our internal network on the LAN. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is before we jump over to the web console, we want to update our PFSense install. So we want to choose option number 13, update from console. So now that we have a link to the external internet, we can go and fetch the repositories for the latest version. And what this is going to do is go ahead and install them for us. It lists the packages that need to be upgraded. Press yes to proceed. Now that we've installed the updates, let's go ahead and reboot the system one last time for good measure. And then we'll log into the web interface and further configure the install. So we need to uh, accept the certificate. So we will trust the unsafe connection for the time being. The admin name is admin and the password is pfsense. And this brings us to the GUI wizard. Now let's go ahead and click through the GUI. So NetGate offers support. We're not interested in that at the moment. We have to select a host name and a domain. For now, these are fine. We have the override DNS setting in place so that we can get our DNS server settings from our ISP. We want to go ahead and change the time zone to our location. For our ISP, the WAN interface is chosen through DHCP from the ISP servers, and the remainder of the settings will leave at default. This is the LAN interface we configured previously. For the new admin password, make sure it's something strong. Now we'll go ahead and click reload to apply the settings. All right, the settings took, and now we go ahead and click here to drop to the admin page. Okay, now that we've successfully made it into our router, we're going to go ahead and attach our wireless access point and get that up and running. So if you followed the instructions in the guide, you'll have installed the Unify Wireless Access Point Configuration Tool. At this point, we're going to want to go ahead and plug in our wireless access point to the switch that's connected to the router. Now you're going to want to go ahead and open the Unify application. Again, the secure connection will be engaged, so go ahead and accept the certificate for the time being. Again, we have to set our time zone. Now select the device, so this is good news. It means that we can see our wireless access point. Now we need to make the name of our network, call it test Wi-Fi, and give it an appropriate password. 
we need to create some admin accounts. So we need two admin accounts. We need a super admin and a device admin. So go ahead and fill in the information here and make sure you write down your device authentication password. It changes automatically each install or you can change it to whatever value you want to. Go ahead and click finish. Since we're not using a cloud login and we're directly connected to the access point, go ahead and say skip. And then we'll log in with our super admin account. Now here we can see our wireless LAN device is active. Looks good. Go ahead and click on this access point circle here labeled devices. And it'll bring up our information about our devices. It gives us our device name, which is the MAC address, the IP, and its status. Also, we've already updated this to the latest firmware, but if you needed to, this would be the location where the firmware update button is. And with that, we've managed to complete our basic PFSense install. So in the subsequent films, we will be setting up additional services uh, such as Squid and Snort. So stay tuned and look forward to those videos.